fierce fighting in the northern front lines of Yemen. Houthi rebels say they've launched major attacks on Saudi UAE-backed forces across the border in Saudi Arabia over the past three days. A number of Saudi soldiers were killed and their military positions captured, according to Houthi media sources. Saudi media is also reporting the deaths of soldiers. The Houthis say the attacks will not stop. Our operations will continue and in the coming days they will advance further as the war on Yemen continues and the coalition continues to violate their obligations and promises under the Hodeida agreement. The army and resistance fighters have no alternative but to continue to fight and intensify their tactical operations. This is the first significant escalation in violence since a UN brokered ceasefire deal was signed in Sweden last December. The head of the UN mission tasked with implementing that deal in the port city of Hodeida is trying to stop the conflict from getting any worse. But the realities on the ground are a sobering reminder of the challenges. This agreement was sort of uh, done upside down uh, by focusing uh, on Hodeida. Uh, of course. Of course, it's a major humanitarian access, and that's fine. But if you say a ceasefire in Hodeida, and it's okay to have uh, uh, ongoing war in the rest of the country, that's not a good thing. And this is the consequence of the fighting for millions of Yemenis. Koba and her family were forced to live under a tree after escaping bombardment near the Saudi border. Starvation has weakened her so much that this 12-year-old now weighs just 10 kilos. For 22 million Yemenis who desperately need aid to survive, more fighting means even more suffering. It looks like both sides are not very serious about ending the war. And it seems that the Yemen, uh, the UN envoy to Yemen, Mr. Martin Griffiths, is going to have to pull a lot more weight uh, on putting pressure onto these parties, meaning that he's going to have to rely on uh, the British government and the American government into saying that, hey, the international community here wants peace and therefore that's what's going to happen. Politicians in the UK and the US are stepping up pressure to stop exporting arms to Saudi Arabia with the hope of preventing the world's worst humanitarian crisis from getting even worse. Priyanka Gupta, Al Jazeera.